also you guys thinking about some of the we have some open uh, questions which you can brainstorm together on. In fact, this, uh, this format of tables was to enable some discussion. And then we'll have discussions. And there is importantly a session with Mandan in the evening where every track is sort of being provided to go back and share some insights. Uh, not as a, as a final conclusion, but as a starting point for the community to take forward in this particular uh, event. Uh, so, um, what I thought we could do, given that it's a fairly large group, uh, is we take 10 seconds each to introduce ourselves, just the name that you're coming from, and maybe one line if you like to, um, and, and then just know who's in the, in the room and taking settings of some computers, and then we can start. Is that okay? Okay, we can start from this one. Sneha from NASCAR. I'm Ruchita from BCG, working with the Rajasthan team and we are using AI for assessments and the data management. Abhishek Gopalka, BCG. I'm Vinod Kanadu from Malwa Abhishek, National Digital Party Association. I'm Nirmal Patil from Kleba and we have developed technology to digitize paper assessments and we also work with data management. I'm Sanjay Chitnis from RV University. Okay. Uh, one meet from Tibet Solutions. Viresh from Tibet Solutions. Sorry? Viresh from Tibet Solutions. Sorry. Uh, Viresh from Tibet Solutions. Hi, I'm Priyak from Data.org. Interested in seeing how we train the next one billion uh, data professionals in the world in the next few days. Hi, Nikita from Jessica from Customized Energy Solutions. We uh, develop and deliver trainings for iNatural Storage and Pavan from NCF, so I handle this small team of data. And I'm also a student of IT Madras, pursuing his BS in data science. Hi, Salil Mehta from EY, um, having the chance to work on Diksha and Bhashini, and really keen to you know get some uh, inspiring ideas on what, how do we make EY wo uh, AI work for uh, education and skilling. Hi, Akshay Nambi, principal researcher from Microsoft Research India, um, working on developing generative AI algorithms for various societal problems, including education. Looking forward for this session. Thank you. Amar from uh, Diva Networks. We work in verifiable credentials and uh, skilling and other things. Uh, also have our own ledger for more data trust and stuff like that. Thank you. Satya from Career Launcher, volunteering for Eight Step. Another Satya. My name is Satya Prasad. I'm from the Center for Innovation and Entrepreneurship. I'm looking to find uh, partners uh, in uh, promoting uh, AI innovation and education. Hey, hi, I'm Athar from InnoMinds. We are looking to see how we can help in AI in the infrastructure for education. Do you want to? Hi, uh, I'm Gautam Raj from Reap Benefit Foundation. So we are into uh, skill developing by uh, with youth through local problem solving. Uh, good morning. My name is Ankit Nakra. I'm lead product manager of a B2B platform working on AI ML technology. How can we solve the capacity building for underserved and AI can help? Thanks. Hi, I'm Ankit Kumar from the same team of Eco India. Hi, I'm Akash. I'm, I'm part of Sikshalokam building open source projects, uh, open source solutions for education in India. Here to learn about how we can integrate and use AI, uh, which is being uh, built here in the community for the education sector in India. Hi, I'm Hi, I'm Purvi from Pratham Book Story Weaver. I'm very excited to be here as uh, we are India's first open source platform for children's books in 330 languages. Some of the Indic language work that we've done with IIT Madras as well. Here, I'm from, I'm Ashwin, uh, from A for Bharat, IIT Madras. We work on Indian language AI. The same here as well. I'm Gokul. Uh, I'm also from A for Bharat. We work on yeah, Indic language AI. I'm Kaushal. I'm a PhD student at IIT Madras. I'm looking for interesting problem statements, use cases where uh, education can be improved using AI. Yeah. Hi, uh, I'm Ashish Agarwal from NPBridge Solution, and we are building solutions using AI to assist teachers and students to use learning platforms more easily accessibly. 
Hi, I am Saurabh Vyas, uh, co-founder of Vinu All. We are looking to enable low-cost uh, edtech in India by empowering uh, local educators and tutors through software and content. Hello, I'm Manohar, uh, CTO at Sattva Consulting. We have several projects at the intersection of uh, technology and education. I'm, I'm keen on looking at also the, um, let's say, the value of AI towards learning outcomes, which is what we also heard earlier. Hello, everyone. I'm Sashik Mar, professor in the Department of Computational Data Science, IAC Bangalore, also the founder of Zentik EdTech Private Limited. Our focus is uh, how to leverage AI into higher education. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Prasanta, faculty in the Department of Electrical Engineering at IIC. I work in the area of speech and language. Among others, I lead the Vani project from Google. Hi, I'm Anand, founder of Wonderfully Technologies. Uh, we are the biggest technology uh, partners for Indian pub academic publishing industry. We work with them in uh, digitizing, um, uh, creating a smart e-books. How do you add value to the huge experience they have in terms of creating ac academic content? Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Janvi from NP Bread Solutions. Hi, I'm Mohan. I'm a founder of a uh, product engineering services company. Uh, we work for uh, Shiksha Lokam, so I'm here to take in ideas and then see how we can use them. Hi, I'm Prakhar Jain. I work with Central Square Foundation. Um, we support various organizations, work with governments on uh, reforming uh, the school education system, specifically early grade learning. And uh, as an org, we are a big believer in tech. Um, so we are looking forward to the discussion today. Uh, Harsh Shetty from Pratham, it's an education non-profit. Yeah. Nishant from Pratham, uh, I work on technology and hopefully we'll have the ASA reports showing good signs later on. <laughs> Hi, Vikram from Infosys Wingspan, we have a platform a product uh, for you. Yeah, Venkresh Prasanna from Infosys Wingspan. Hello, Sham from Infosys. Hi, I'm Sneha. I also am pro I am from Infosys, and I'm working in recruitment and uh, skill domain, building tech for recruitment and upskilling uh, platforms. Hi, I'm Ashwin. I'm part of Maple Labs. We're into observability and product engineering services. Uh, I'm, my, my interest areas includes yoga as well. Let's see how it goes. Thanks. Hi, I'm um, Sudhakar from Tarka Labs. Um, we build awesome software. It's all real-world problems. So, yeah, we'll see. I'm very interested to see how we can connect and uh, build more pro solve more problems. <laughs> uh, good morning. I'm Gangadhar from Rame University. Uh, I'm from Computer Science Department. I had a good opportunity of building a lot of programs. So, good opportunity again to rebuild many of those, you know, MTech and BTech programs. Maybe look forward. And I've been a volunteer for India Literacy Project, so which is you know, so for a long time. So, thank you. I'm Sandeep. Uh, I represent quizzes. Um, for people that have not heard about quizzes, we try to improve learning outcomes in classrooms uh, by trying to engage students in, um, in, in like interactive, engaging ways. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Charan. I'm a product manager with Microsoft. I work on machine translation, um, breaking language barriers one language at a time. So very excited to be here. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Anand. I'm a colleague of uh, Charan at Microsoft. I work on AI services. Sorry. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Shri Kumar from InnoMinds. Uh, one of the few people here who do hardware, I think. So this is a piece of hardware we built here, where a single computer can be used uh, to run a full classroom. So basically for ed education and skilling. Uh, so if, if AI has to be deployed, I don't think everything can be on the cloud. I'll stop at that. I'll stop at that. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Akesh Verma. I'm playing two roles from Government of India. I'm heading Diksha and NDA at DIC. I'm also heading Karmiyogi Bharat's capacity building one. Hi, everyone. I'm Sunaina Sitaram from Microsoft Research India. And um, my area of work is multilingual NLP. And I'm super excited to be here and meet all of you. Hello, everyone. Apoor from Blendnet. Uh, second with the, I forgot the name, uh, bringing edge to AI, uh, edge in 
Edge to edge. Sorry. <laughs> Just uh, in the spotlight. Wait a second. OK, uh, I'll try that again. Uh, low cost technology, which helps uh, bring computing and edge, uh, uh, computing and machine learning to the edge. Uh, we use satellite and a hardware. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Not every, everything can be done on the cloud. So, yes. Uh, I uh, just uh, moved out of Microsoft Research, Sunaina and Pratish were my colleagues there. Thank you. Excited to be here, as you all can see. Hi, everyone. I was uh, recently CTO of a company called Manthan, and I was uh, the chair of NASCOM Product Council. I currently help run a lot of communities around technology and products. We are done. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Irina. I work with Ashoka Innovators for the Public, which is the largest network of social entrepreneurs in the world. And uh, I run a program in, Aspire, uh, in Ashoka called Aspire that helps social entrepreneurs leverage technology for impact at scale, which we run in collaboration with societal thinking. Uh, so nice to meet so many technologists. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Vijay from Swiggy. Uh, like most people here, I'm excited about leveraging technology to solve problems and drive impact at scale. Hi, everyone. I'm Harsh. Uh, I work at NextSleep. Uh, we work in the upskilling space for working professionals in tech. So yeah, we're trying to bridge the gap between upskilling and learning. So that's what I'm here for. Hi, everyone. I'm Astha Patel. I recently finished my master's in educational technology and AI. And I've joined Rocket Learning as a learning experience designer. Um, <clears throat> hi, everyone. I'm Janani. I'm a doctor from St. John's Medical College. I'm part of the medical education department, and I'm interested in teaching clinical reasoning to MBBS students. Hi, everyone. Um, I recently used to work with um, coding for children, actually developing curriculum. So I want to see where AI goes now. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Simran. I'm, uh, I run a company called Rangeet in Mumbai. Uh, we've developed a, um, a a platform for teachers to teach um, a breadth of skills, which is essentially social emotional learning, uh, including uh, enabling them with climate uh, awareness and, uh, and agency uh, and life skills. Um, and this is done through what we call active pedagogies. Um, I know very little about AI. Uh, I hope to learn a lot from, from today. But pre predominantly how we can bring, um, use AI to help teachers uh, to use active pedagogies much more effectively because that takes so much time. And so hopefully using large language models to really streamline and make and bring a really great education to as many kids as possible. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Abhishek Doshi. I'm the founder of The Learner Company. And we are working to integrate mass personalization and multimodal learning in higher education institutes because there's a huge lack and a lapse in sort of how they are utilizing technology for the best online learning experience. Uh, hi, I'm Umakan Soni. I'm a uh, <coughs> uh, general partner at Art Venture Fund. And, uh, I co-founded uh, Art Park, AI and Robotics Technology Park, and uh, last 15 years been in AI space as an entrepreneur and investor. And uh, I'm extremely interested in learning as a space because I feel that fundamentally bots are learning faster than us. Hello. <laughs> so actually, I kind of like lost my voice. My name is Abhinit. Uh, I work for Vadwani AI. Uh, and I lead the education and skilling work uh, with them. Hi, my name is Abhishek Bendigiri. And uh, I work as director of products with Oracle, specifically with Oracle Health, always on the lookout for uh, innovations in the AI, ML, NLP, which uh, we usually kind of get into the patients and physicians' workflows that we do. Clinical education plays a very critical role, whatever that we are doing at Oracle. So I'm looking forward to see what innovations exist there. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Abhijit. I run Machine Hack. Uh, using the latest generative AI um, wave, we have built a co-pilot for training AI um, developers. We have more than 100,000 developers already on the platform. We have been at it for the last five years. We're looking for partners and backers to make sure we reach 1 million people and become a good alternative to Kaggle. 
Hi all, my name is Bikram. I work with uh, Tata Stripe. It's a skilling initiative of Tata Trust. I work on the technology vertical and my role is to enrich the outcome of the skilling and entrepreneurship using technology. Hi everyone, I'm Bajita, Bajita Joyce. I'm also from Tata Strife. As Bikram said, we are the scaling initiative of the uh, Tata Group. And uh, our, our goal is to impact around 2.5 million youth through uh, employment, entrepreneurship, and community enterprise. And that cannot happen without technology. And uh, we are here to look for some collaborators because in this space, there's no competition. There's only collaboration. So looking forward for that. I guess I'm the last one. So hi, my name is Nikhil Karkare. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Walnut Schools in Pune. And uh, we are a very learning system-based uh, school. And we want to know how AI can transform schooling in the future, in the next few years. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Niharika, and I represent Khan Academy. And uh, super excited to be in a room full of uh, educationists and people from various social uh, sector. And uh, look forward to showing you a little bit about what Khan Academy is doing in the field of AI as well. Um, thank you, everybody. Yeah, sorry. So I'm Lakshman. Uh, I work with an NGO. We work in uh, 24 states on vocational education and skilling. And the specific problem which I'm looking today is uh, measuring the employability skill uh, once a student pass from 12th class. Hi, my name is Mangal. Uh, I run a foundation on early childhood education called Key Education Foundation. Uh, here to understand how we can leverage AI to empower parents to be a partner in the learning of their child. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Shankar from American India Foundation, and uh, we run various educational projects uh, across grades and want to learn the role of AI for uh, education, especially in the um, uh, for lower grades, uh, for A FLN especially. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everybody. That took a bit of time, but I think it was worth it. What I realized was there is so much diversity, so much experience in this room. There are faculty members, there are startup folks, there are people running their own companies, there are people from big tech, people building products. Uh, that's just amazing. I think we should just recognize this is a great forum that has come together, right? And if we have to build stuff with AI for education, this kind of community is required to really make that happen. So feeling great about it, which also means uh, JB and I will speak less uh, and, uh, and give more time to all of you to, uh, to present. Uh, starting off, we will hear from Khan Academy, right? Because uh, many of you, or at least some of you, would have seen uh, that Khan Academy was an early part partner with OpenAI and has been building, imagining what AI plus education looks like. We have a video and we'll have a quick presentation, maybe a uh, discussion right after that. You don't have a video? You'll just present. Okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Hi, everyone. So I got introduced to all of you uh, a couple of minutes earlier. So uh, just a little bit about Khan Academy for those who are uninitiated. Anyone who's not heard of Khan Academy here? All right, okay, that's, <laughs> that's good to know. All right, uh, a little bit that you may not know about Khan Academy. I'm sure you may have uh, used Khan Academy or your kids, those of you who have kids, are using Khan Academy for, uh, you know, for various purposes. You, know, you may have uh, gone in, looked at a video, you may have gone in, done some practice exercises, and, and uh, found how you're going to you know, master a particular concept. But uh, what Khan Academy is doing right now in India is much beyond that. Um, we work with state governments and in government schools, and we want to bring that world-class content that is available for, you know, for the lack of a better word, the haves versus the have-nots, and bring it to the have-nots. So the way we do this is that we work with government, uh, with state governments. We take our content, we contextualize it in the uh, for, for a government school student. So not only is the concept explained in the vernacular, it is also adapted to the state curriculum. That does not mean that the videos are simply translated, but it also means that the videos are recreated for government school learners. So um, 
today we work in the states of UP, Punjab, uh, Maharashtra, and, uh, and we want to scale this impact to a lot more other states and schools. Well, coming to uh, uh, you know, our, latest, uh, uh, our latest innovation, which is called Khan Migo. Uh, when we started off you know, looking at AI and how we want to approach it, one of the first things that we thought of was, uh, all right, is it, is it too early? Is it something that uh, is really required in, in this space? And uh, going back to you know, the way Khan Academy's uh, entire pedagogy is, uh, ha you know, has come about, there are two things that we look at which, uh, which really impact the learning outcomes of any learner. One is mastery learning, and the second is personal tutoring. Right Now, a uh, lot of educationists in this room, uh, I don't think Benjamin Bloom would be somebody you don't know. So in the famous Two Sigma test that Benjamin Bloom conducted, he said that these are the two big movers that can impact learning outcomes. Mastery learning is something that we were anyway doing. All our concepts on Khan Academy platform are anyway broken down into smaller bite-sized pieces, and the learner moves along on their way to proficiency and then master a concept and then moves on to more complex concepts. When AI and OpenAI came in and approached us to, uh, to, to experiment with large language models, we knew that this is the perfect opportunity for us to bring the personal tutoring aspect to a student. The question was, how do you do this? So there were four main guardrails that we had in mind. The first one was that it needs to be a safe space, right? We've been a trusted resource by teachers and uh, students all across the world. So we need to maintain that trust with the teachers and learners, so it needs to be a safe space. Second, it needs to be fun and engaging for the student. We want to ensure that uh, we retain the wonder and the whimsy of learning. The third was that we wanted to ensure that uh, the, the, the AI does not give the students the answer. So there's been a lot of talk in the past couple of weeks, or rather past couple of months, wherein uh, you know, educational institutes are up in the arms and they are banning AI and banning chat GPT and assignments done through that. So we wanted to ensure that our AI does not give the students the answer. And the fourth main thing that we wanted to do was we wanted to be ethical and responsible while doing all of this. Therefore, the entire uh, experiment, we, we'll still call it an experiment, is uh, is not yet open to public. It is being tested. And uh, we've, we've got our demo up, and I can show it to you, but it is not yet open for public consumption. In the next couple of um, months, maybe in, the, in, in a year to come, what we are doing is uh, we are testing it in districts, in school districts in the US, and, and we are learning rapidly about what activities are really you know, moving the needle when it comes to learning outcomes. What is, you know, fringe, you know, it doesn't make that much impact in the classroom, and what is really interesting for teachers and students to engage with, right? So with that said, can I get on to with the demo? Yes, yes, we are very, very waiting for the demo. Watch out for the virus. Yes. So here is how the, the screen comes up when it's blank. You can see there are two sections. One is for teachers and the other is for learners. I'm going to start with the learner section, section first. All right. Let's say we want to do something. All right. Thank you. Can you, can, can you see it? Do you want me to zoom it a little bit? Yeah, yeah. I'll just do that. All right. I think this is visible now. Right? So let's say uh, a student logs in. And my son's uh, in seventh grade learning circles, so that's what's top of my mind, circles. So let's say I say, tell me how, could, could you hold this for me so that I can both hands? To calculate the area 
of a circle. All right, so you can see that I made a typo here as well. And that's... Uh, First thing it'll do is to point out your typo. Yeah, <laughs> hope not. <laughs> All right, so are the area of a circle a classic concept? Let's start by making sure you know the formula of the area of a circle. Do you remember the formula or would you like a hint? So as you can see, it's not giving you the answer. So let's say I say I want a hint. How many of you saw this uh, announcement in YouTube when it came out? Can we see One third of you. All right, it's going a little slow. Uh, yeah, could be the network. Especially in India from now, most of the time, demos at this time fail. <laughs> Wait, when I did it like two minutes ago, it was going much faster. Oh. All right, let me. <laughs> Murphy's Law, really. All right, all right, they, they're con the gods are conspiring with us and uh, it's come up. All right, so the formula is uh, pi and uh, pi r square, so, but, but here it's asking you that it has two important components, the pi and the, radi the circle radius r. Can you recall the formula? So you can see that it's not giving you the answer. And I'm going to say I don't recall the formula. Or if you want, I can say, yes, the formula is uh, pi, sorry, is pi 2, two pi r. And I'm giving a wrong answer. Let's see. Actually, the formula is the circumference, not the area. The area of the circle is slightly different. Would you like a hint or, an, or the correct formula? So even to get the formula, it's not easy. So give me the correct formula. And it'll keep interacting with you this way. Yeah. I, I'll show a couple of other things. So here, if you put in other uh, aspects, uh, you know, you can put in a number and it'll keep guiding you. The other thing that it could do is, uh, let's say you want to, uh, let's say, chat with a historical figure. OK? Let's say I want to chat with Mahatma Gandhi. I would love to meet Mahatma Gandhi. Oh, I'm humbled by your choice. I'm now an AI simulation of Mr. Mahatma Gandhi. All right, now let's engage in a meaningful conversation. What would you like to know about me? So yesterday, uh, you know, we, while we were testing this, we said, why did you only wear a dhoti? Remember, I'm a sec seventh grader here. So I chose to wear a simple dhoti as a symbol of commitment, a simplicity and rejection of materialism, and, and it'll go on. Right? So this is another way that students can interact with the AI. The other things that it could do is craft a story. Now, this is something that uh, a lot of students, and, and, and I keep my son as the use case, you know, as soon as uh, we tell him craft a story, okay, I want to write a story about aliens, let's say. Uh, okay, let's write a fantasy story. How marvelous. And, and look at the emojis, I love them. So do you have any setting or characters? Uh, let's say I change my mind about fantasy and I say I want to write about aliens. An alien fantasy story, let's say. Right? So aliens make for fantasy, otherworldly tale. Let's start by writing the first two sentences. You can set the scene or introduce a character. 
My name is Mr. X. I live on Jupiter. First two sentences, very, very simple ones. And let's see what it gives us. So what, what I suggest, hold on to the next two, and Pratish will also give an afterthought on all of these, and then we can go in. Okay. All right, this is taking time. I'll just go, okay, yeah. All right, I'll try and see if some of the hooks for teachers come up. So let's say, I'm gonna try this one out, create a humanities lesson plan, all right? So this is another one. So I want to teach about Akbar the Great. So would you like to see a rough draft or a ses session plan? Yes, I'd like a session plan. All right, I'm sorry it's not working right now, but maybe in the break, yeah. if the gods are uh, kind to us, it may. But yeah, so that's uh, the demo. And uh, Thank you. Quick round right? of No, thanks a lot, Niharika. I think some of us have seen that, but for others, I'm sure you are mind blown by what is possible with these models. And what I also like is you're experimenting with schools and eventually you'll learn and probably share those learnings in the spirit of Khan Academy so other people could also use it. In fact, JB has been trying to build similar things and we'll take audience questions right after he shows what he, he plans to because it's on a similar line. Uh, what is different in what JB will show uh, is that he will, again, use the same GPT kind of models to, in, to in a chat experience, uh, ask questions like a student, like a teacher, but he'll try to show how this can be grounded in content from our NCRT textbooks, which are open source. These textbooks are available. So can we ask questions? Can we get links to these uh, textbooks, right? So JB, can you start off and then... So, so we'll do a job. Uh, so the same models that I was expecting this, right? The, the, <laughs> <laughs> the models are the same, right? No matter the interface. I can help you out with that. Uh, photosynthesis is a process by which green plants and so on. Uh, there, there are details. Um, no, we wanted to, we want, yeah, so maybe you say, okay, let's say it says here, here are some key points, right? So maybe you say, uh, I understand the, uh, the, the uh, po remaining points, but the second point is too hard for me. Can you explain the second point? So one thing that we didn't show is, at the end of this last message, there was a link. And if you can show the, uh, click the link, uh, JB, uh, you will si find the, the exact chapter from the NCRT textbook on which it grounded this particular answer. Uh, it should open in a different tab. It did, right? Yeah, you can go there. Uh, and of course, right now, it is not mapped to the individual page. But in this chapter somewhere, there is actually the things about photosynthesis. You can go and read it. Uh, of course, the textbook is, is quite rich and so on, right? Um, and those equations it pulled out from here. So there is, these GPT models can be thought of as generative engines, which are replaying what they have learned in pre-training, or as reasoning engines grounded on material that you provide, like for example with these uh, textbooks, right? Um, so it, it provides uh, some information. A recap for all of us who were studied photosynthesis sometime, but I've forgotten that there's so much detail there. Uh, maybe you want to check how well it does in Indian languages, right? Maybe you say, I want to explain the above in uh, Kannadiga or Hindi. Right? Okay, Kannada. <laughs> Kannada, right, I should say. Go ahead, go ahead. Kannada. I know he's a very proud Kannadiga, so he, I should be careful. Yeah, so the way, way to think about this is now he's asking a question in English, and he's looking, the model has access to material in English, but it's now required to answer in Canada, in Canada, right? Uh, in Canada. So, and, and, the, and this GPT-4 models are able to do that, right? They're actually able to generate output. The generative uh, experience is actually good enough in about 10 Indian languages now, the top 10 uh, Indian uh, resource languages uh, currently. Uh, you should read it out for us. Yeah, yeah. No, first of all, it took me back to my 7th, 8th, ninth grade, right? So this is the language. Uh, it's still using photosynthesis here, but uh, it says, no, Berakina Sahai Dinda Sasegalu Tamma Aharu Anu Tayar Prakriya. First of all, it's very complete. 
very complete in the way it is. Uh, it is uh, not, a photosynthesis is not called photosynthesis. It's called uh, something else. Uh, I've forgotten. But uh, let's see if it shows up here. Oh, very fluent. And it's very correct also. Right, ingala the dioxide. It says carbon dioxide. It should have been ingala the dioxide there. But, uh, you know, in today's Canada English combinations, all of this works, yeah. Now, can we switch JB and act like a teacher? Maybe you refresh the page so that it starts a new... Uh, Yeah, yeah. The, the conversation, I think by now all of us know, right? Uh, we have played the chat GPT. It maintains context, right? Now it knows that we are talking about these topics and it maintains the context. Now, maybe as a teacher, you could say, uh, I want to uh, set a quiz for students. Uh, maybe take, let's say, take a different topic uh, on, on box sites, right? On, that's what we tried last evening uh, on box sites. Uh, give me one question from the textbook and one from outside the textbook. First, can I just say quiz on box sites? Okay. Yeah, you could do that. Yes. So yeah, it comes up with MCQs, which is the usual way I think we test. You can also ask actually detailed questions, uh, multiple choice, all that you can ask. Right. So I think, I think you're getting a sense of it, right? Even in the demo that Niharika you had, you have both the teacher experience and the student experience. So education is looked at from both uh, the sides, and you can really improve it. Um, in fact, it goes more. So you can ask it to replay some questions from the textbook, because students have exercises at the end of the textbook. Some could be replayed. And you can ask it to ask questions not in the textbook as well and combine the two. So we'll pause there. I'm sure all of, there, are, there are questions, there are comments in the room. Uh, we can take a few and then move on to the other ones, right? While JB plays a bit more on the screen, yeah. How did you ground them in a particular textbook? Is there uh, additional fine tuning you did? Can you explain that? Yeah, so as some of you would know, fine tuning these large language models is a hairy job. Most people don't do that. Uh, these textbooks are ingested by looking at what the text there is and creating sort of embeddings of them right, as a vector index. And when you ask a question here, you try to find appropriate pieces of that textbook and take them as part of the sort of prompt of this and then answer the question, right? So uh, that ensures that this process is extensible. Tomorrow I can add new textbooks, new topics, new classes and so on, yeah. Uh, so we work across India, all the states, and the question which I think uh, Nandan also mentioned is, uh, and every year we are doing exit survey of all the students, 10th, 12th class. Now even today, uh, there are 15% of students who do not have their own mobile, including their parents don't have a mobile. Now the question which I have is as a larger part is if you are looking at the educational content or the content, if you want to implement this in any state in India, I can tell even Delhi, so there will be still some student who will not have any mobile connectivity. So, so is it feasible? Because this question asked, the state government administration asked that if I want to implement this, there are still students who will not have access to it. So is it fair for you to propose the system rather than whatever is going in? So that's what I want to, because all will face same issue if you are looking at an education sector. So what we'll do is we'll take a bunch of questions and then we will uh, comment on them. Just wanted to understand on the assessments, were they, are they driven by say, you know, a question bank that is created or can the system generate the questions on its own basis, the text? So what we'll do is we'll take about four or five more questions. What JB told me was, what he prompted me was, we'll let the teams in the smaller groups discuss it, right? And let, let you come up with some more insights and then we can uh, have a discussion. Yeah, so my question is, is a little complimentary, is a little complimentary to what he said, right? So you have restrictions on six to ninth, so you might as well do it on the user's device or something like that. So is that something you have considered? So? Yeah, yeah, these models are very big, so we will talk about how to run them as well. So Niharika, I have a question to you. So as you're implementing the work of Khan Academy in various uh, schools, what are some of the key concerns that you have basis how kids may use this technology or you know how it can have a very different like ripple effect or something or the other, right? Like for instance, the question on Gandhi, right? Like people can ask some absurd questions and it can create all sorts of uh, problems. Yeah. yeah, can we turn on the light? Who was switching it off? That would be helpful. Uh, so I think Pratish, the question is if the source knowledge itself is in vernacular, how does that impact the LLM? Because I can understand the translation happening in, in to and fro, but if the source knowledge and there is a not, lot of knowledge in vernacular, how will that be sort of factored in? Uh, Pratish, uh, one question on uh, what Tavinit asked. Yeah. She can respond, I guess. 
Hi, thank you for that question. So uh, on, the, the, on the platform, the entire co uh, conversation is actually transcribed. And uh, if there is anything that gets flagged off, the teacher will come to know immediately. If there's any inappropriate question or anything that uh, is uh, getting flagged off, even by the AI, suppose the AI had hallucinates and gives you inappropriate responses, uh, the teacher would be, you know, it would get flagged off to the teacher. And that is how we are setting these guardrails. But it still needs to be tested. And that is why it's not going out in the open environment right now. Yeah. Hi. Um, I have a question for Niharika. Um, so especially in the demo you showed, um, a lot of the material for maths and science involves a lot of visual imagery. So how are you kind of accounting for that? For example, the question that, are, that was asked around area of circle, uh, it could have been better explained through a video which already exists in the Khan Academy repository. So yeah, that's the question. Yeah, I didn't get to showing that. But uh, you could go on uh, the video itself, and the video would play. And you could ask the AI to summarize the video, re-explain the video, uh, do a fun poem on the video, whatever. So, so it does go back to the video as well. Uh, I think my question is to both us, how do we ensure that it supports the human potential but doesn't actually disempower children to say that if you have an assignment or a mathematical challenge, how do you make sure the child doesn't just insert it in the GPT and gets an answer and then just copies it you know, to submit their assignment, which I'm sure most children would be tempted to do. So what are the guardrails for that? Uh, maybe both of you. Uh, have uh, Before starting these experiments, have you actually envisaged the uh, you know, the, the framework under which you want to use the AI, for example, what are the guidelines? I mean, I would like to know that, not because, you know, as an inquiry, but really if you have actually already come up with a framework, we would like to know it. I mean, it will be a great, uh, you know, useful thing for us. Um, my question is, uh, how do you think about prompting? So in the case of the circle, how frequently do you think a prompt would help? Uh, sometimes a child might be comfortable asking the question rather than typing it out, uh, especially at the lower grades, or they have been reached a specific writing proficiency. So how does that get incorporated? And the number of times that you would prompt that child, because sometimes if within, a two, within two attempts, if the answer is not arrived at, the kind of frustration that sets in around learning, that does happen. So how do we work around? Because children have different uh, learning paces. So one uh, request, Pratyush uh, and rest of you. You know, um, there is too many questions for sure. Okay. <laughs> I also have questions, and I keep bothering him and Vivek and others. So here is my suggestion. All of these are great discussion topics at your table. This is not a demo place, right? This is a discussion. And I suspect and I'm sure we don't have answers to much of your questions, right? That's the real fact. The evolution is very, very fast. Therefore, Pratyush, how do we organize the discussion? And first of all, also, some of the questions already asked, he is the only one who can answer this. Right? Uh, I, I, my instinct is to do a couple of more questions, and then we store a bit of questions, and then we let the people discuss among themselves. Right? Uh, I guess we could probably think of the categories of questions, and then take away a little categorization that we can then... So I just want to kind of give you a zoom out view of what's going on today, right now. First of all, I'm requesting all of you to come back, second show also. Okay, there's a second show for this. So. So first track, first show in some sense is about learning infrastructures. So you were question on uh, what's going on and your question on accessibility and so on and so forth. Even when we are building Diksha and so on, this is extra. So this is about learning infrastructures. So Khan Academy, part of a learning infrastructure, whatever you saw as a part of a learning infrastructure, and few more things you will see as a part of the learning infrastructure, the learning infrastructure. Then comes the language infrastructure, uh, that's the second, Part B, that's a language infrastructure. At a national scale, maybe international scale, many of those things are actually international in their stories. So this is what's going on right now. So whatever Niharika showed, what I showed is all part of the learning, and I'll show a few more things, right? These are all part of the larger learning narratives, OK? Uh, so sorry to be a little critical here, but I kind of feel that whatever we have done is kind of you know uh, getting a book in a 
chat kind of a format, question in a chat kind of format. We believe that, you know, this can change. But again, thinking, I mean, how much fundamentally it can shift, right? Books were always there. Even teachers were always there who were sitting in the class and explaining. And today we still feel that, you know, 90% of the kids are not able to learn the concepts, right? They are just remembering it, right? So how can we actually leverage this technology to ensure we teach kids learning how to learn rather than just, you know, remembering whatever facts are thrown to them, right? Um, I'm actually going to build on that question, but a very different twist, which is, uh, what does all of this mean in terms of reimagining education? Because sometimes the tools that you have limit your imagination. And so with these newer set of tools, do we think we should take a step back and say, what should therefore the role of a teacher be? What should a classroom be or not be? How should we think about learning? Should we rethink it is one question. Second, what is the rate limiting factor? So for example, is it change management with respect to teachers or administrators? Is it the assets? What's the rate limiting factor? I have a, sure. just one comment on the efficacy. So I've been doing a lot of learning science research, A-B testing and evaluating uh, what works. And I think with all of these new approaches coming in, we don't really know what works. And I think we should be thinking about how to measure that systematically. I'm sure there have been some Tulna framework and other frameworks, but yeah. Uh, yeah. First of all, uh, uh, good to see the very good initiatives in the education sector. And uh, according to me, most, uh, because I taught a lot of students uh, over the last 10 years, well, the main critical point is the personalized education is the greater cause. And when I say personalized, because all of us are trying to you know provide the content and tech enablement, but at the end of the day, uh, uh, we have to cater the, we have to deliver the content according to the IQ and whatever the knowledge that particular student is having at that particular right moment. But somewhere, uh, when I looked into the demo of um, uh, Khan Academy, they are trying to s solve in that space uh, by not giving the direct answers and going to understand and giving the hint. But I would, I'm really curious to understand on the other tool demo what we saw. Uh, what is the, is there anything in a roadmap for the uh, bringing a personalization there or in understanding each student because that's where the tech can because the, in a, a normal school system the teachers cannot really spend so much of time with each and every student that's where the tech and ai can play a very vital role and uh, is there any roadmap or is there anything thinking in that direction there's one more question sir I get to be the last one. Hey, um, so I was wondering, like the applications of collaboration, uh, contrasting a little bit around personalization. A lot of ed tech today is like one is to one. Uh, there are like accounts you just work, but learning happens in communities and like in a peer format. So how can like ChatGPT work as a facilitator to enable multiple people learning together, say in a tuition class or at home or siblings learning together? Uh, that would be an interesting space to discuss. Cool. No, thanks for all the questions. I know there are many more, but JP is right here. So we'll stop the questions. But uh, what I'm uh, going to do is uh, just take the liberty of thinking of two or three categories, and then you can respond to some of them also. Uh, one category of questions is, uh, we are building some very complex system with AI. How are we designing the framework for designing that, right? So what is the framework to build this? And I think Niharika already mentioned that they have these four points that define the kinds of guardrails. And you saw that in action, but we should discuss that more and also do it collaboratively. Uh, the second question was roughly around language. Some people were asking about language. Um, uh, so one is these GPT models, right? They are very cool reasoning models. They can reason on various things, including textbooks. But there's another infrastructure required, and JB calls that the language infrastructure. If I want to speak in Canada, right, uh, as a kid, and I want the you machine. Are a, you are a learning machine. Yeah. Correct. And I want the machine to exactly know what I said. Then I need a Canada speech recognition model, right? Different from the GPT model that is doing reasoning on the textbook content, right? So we definitely need to augment that with language AI plus this uh, reasoning AI. Um, and then there was this third set of questions around, uh, I like this framing around, how do you redefine education? In fact, Nandan on the stage also said, what will schools look like? What will, what will teachers do and so on, right? I think that is a question we should deeply think about. And the way I'm looking at this demo, and to answer your question also, these are first building blocks that some people are putting together, right? And Khan Academy
that way. He's a very well-known name. But I'm sure there's a lot more to be built on top of this, right? And the point about collaboration between students, how do you provide guardrails, how do you ensure it's step-by-step step and so on. I think there's a lot to be done, uh, but this is just a, uh, a starting point, right? Uh, there is this effort, in fact, Abhishek Singh stood on the stage and he talked about this Bhashini project, which is India's effort on building sovereign AI models. And so far, we have been building things like speech recognition, translation, speech synthesis, and so on. This whole LLM wave is very new, right? Frankly, we as a country um, building open source software have not yet built enough, let's say, tech expertise to mount a challenge and build a similar open model, right? But at some point, folks will do it, right? But uh, just for you to know, this is a rather large step change in terms of technology, and it'll take a while for us to have equivalent models that are as good, right? But there is a lot of intent. In fact, Nandan also mentioned we want to have that sovereignty and so on. Any other category? I think category one was how do we have guardrails? Category two was language infrastructure. Category three was building systems around this. The language performance of these models are quickly evolving. In fact, this is, both these demos are with GPT-4, the latest model. And GPT-3.5 was much worse on Indian languages, right? And, and there's a sudden ramp up and supporting 11 languages. But even there, uh, my mother tongue is Odia. Uh, it's not as good in Odia. Right? And it's better in Bengali, which has much more resources. So there is this responsibility that we have also of unlocking our language data for open source or closed source models to do well on those languages. So uh, there, in fact, uh, right now, there is this track in the other main hall exactly on this topic. How do we build an Indic GPT? What are the components of it? And so on. But we can uh, continue. Maybe so, I'll add so, that as a fourth point on sovereignty. Yeah. So one point, just as a idea of this whole people plus AI, I just want to kind of stretch the tone for it, right? Uh, in many ways, Bhashini, or uh, Nandan actually talked about a chronology of events from 2010 or something, right? 16 one, but otherwise, I've been part of this journey from 2009 onwards. It's actually this tone of this community is, we set the problem statement and we solve it. We give ourselves the power to organize ourselves, to come around, and uh, figure out a way to solve it. it. None of these problems are actually for somebody else to solve for us, right? So in some sense, whatever is shown is what is happening. We like it or not, it's like a fact, right? And it will come and it's happening at such passive pace, GPT 3.5 to now on the la large language model. And maybe it's time for me to switch to another story on yeah. Tamil Nadu. This will be a good segue to talk about language. Yeah. yeah. So what I suggest you see this as is nothing to do with LLM and whatever else. Uh, this is actually an effort in Tamil Nadu for uh, what you'll see is a video from Tamil Nadu. We're not going to see technology. It's a video. Can you please make the audio work? So just hold on, I'll just give a brief idea so that people can see it in the context. Um, this is an initiative leveraging language AI, learning AI, personalization one of you spoke of, uh, to make sure a very narrow problem of children or adults speaking fluency, reading fluency, right? It's not a product, it's an initiative. It's an open source initiative, community-led initiative. Again, the same theme. If you see a problem that we have a fluency problem, language acquisition issue, and Pratham Asar has been highlighting it. Nishant is here in the room, and he's been highlighting it for a long time. There he is, right? So almost 20, 25 years that I know of, it's been highlighting. So now, can we actually solve it conclusively in a way Google Maps solve for navigation most of the time, right? So that's the video about Pratyush. Yeah, try. Let's see if the audio comes. Kalid Hussain. Language is what makes us human. It deepens our connections within our community and allows us to participate Sorry. in our culture. Our culture is rooted so, in our language so and power is central to our identity. On the other hand, the world is a stage for many languages and Tamil Nadu government would like to build a bridge for our students to act global so, talk and offer you go, since English is a stepping stone to becoming an active global citizen, the school education department has chosen to start this journey with language labs, hooligans. Students and teachers will learn and practice English and Tamil through interactive listening, speaking, reading, and writing in the language labs of the School Education Department of Tamil Nadu. 
these teachers are very happy that government is introducing language labs in all government schools. It's a very good idea. In this language lab, they will be allowed to talk freely, interact with the uh, course student, uh, students as well as teachers. By that, they can improve their language skills. Self-expression and effective communication means confident fluency. The language lab aims to fulfill this fluency objective by applying artificial intelligence driven by a foundation of well-researched pedagogy, multimodal learning through audio, visual, kinesthetic and other means, encourage peer learning and active collaboration. Now, students will learn Tamil and English, but not at the cost of their cultural identity. Hi, I'm Roshni. Uh, Ruben, he studied in government school. We are here for more than one year and we are very happy about this study. I heard that you are bringing up an app and I hope not only my son, every student in this government school will be very interested as a playful method to read, write and learn, gain knowledge from it. Now, I'm here doing uh, fun for NASA. I could not have this kid's position without my communication skills. Thank you, Tamil government, for the initiative, the language lab. Language is the doorway to possibility. With the help of language lab, the Tamil Nadu School Education Department hopes to open the doors of possibility to millions of you and help create a new generation of empowered citizens. So the initiative here is simply, uh, so the initiative is basically remember uh, personalization with uh, every child knowing what we know, what the child knows, what words they know, what letters they know, and uh, remembering that at a child level, at a scale of a, uh, almost uh, uh, six and a half thousand schools, each school having technology labs uh, so that everybody, it's not about app on phone and things like that. It's not anything to do with their personal devices. It's actually what the school is providing for. I mean, I saw that first time around in school, there is a purpose for that machine. We have been spending money on, uh, uh, you know, right? and uh, I also want you to hear, um, with a lot of pain, I downloaded a video of uh, uh, Nanta Kumar. I want to see if I can play for that. Nantakumar spent a lot of, Nantakumar is the commissioner of education. He possibly spent one hour trying to create this video and, and send it to you all. Uh, and he also edited it on his phone. And I want to see if I can play it to you. We also have more than a lack of English technology students teaching them their mother tongue, Tamil, as well as English, for that situation. We are happy to team up with Ace in our language lab initiative. The idea is to set up offline language labs in all our middle, high, high secondary schools that are 14,000 locations. We strongly believe that when the right set of tools are given to our teachers and students, the language learning becomes a memorable experience. The language lab is powered by artificial intelligence. The idea is to give the cutting its technology to the most deserving part of the society. I wish you all in this endeavor. I am again happy to take the next step after a long time. Thank you. Okay, he mentioned long time. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, so that was an initiative of uh, leveraging AI, language AI, where you can actually hear what the child is speaking. And I have audios, maybe in the interest of time, I'll not play. In uh, There are a bunch of children from all districts of Tamil Nadu when they all sh showed up. Even the state was quite surprised about the differences in their uh, uh, dialects uh, that they are not able to understand from Chennai space, that they can't understand, right? So the AI models that actually leverages uh, and builds for the diversity, number one, and the second part of it is uh, learning models that can actually make learning precise and step function for every child. So that's a larger idea. So what I suggest now, instead of a question answer session, I'm thinking how to actually create some kind of uh, you know brainstorm among yourselves. And there, there is Mitesh as well. OK, Sarjan is right in time. <laughs> yeah. So Mitesh, we just went through a Tamil Nadu story. Yeah. Do you want to kind of quickly talk about it? Let's kind of do some Jugalbandi. Okay, Are you OK? Yeah, yeah sure. All right, OK. <laughs> We have done this once before. Huh. Yeah. yeah.
Sorry, hold this. We did not tell them that we have done this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Mitesh, so we just saw Tamil Nadu, Nant Kumar story. My WhatsApp is open. Yeah. Did you did not read, right? He's making notes. <laughs> you making notes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we saw Tamil Nadu stuff, right? So, and Pratyush was here to explain about some amount of LLM and stuff like that. Let's say for a moment we move from GPT yeah. and looking at the possibilities that language AI provides for Tamil Nadu, what's going on in Tamil Nadu? How are we able to actually locate hmm. uh, children's voices? So what, what's going on there? So I think uh, what we're trying to do here, I think I'll just quickly summarize, I'm sure Nanda Kumar spoke about it, right? So helping children learn their language right? and start with mother tongue and then go to English and other desired languages, right? And the key part here is that we don't, how does this happen today, right? We have these sessions in the school where the kid comes and reads, there's a teacher sitting there who does this reading evaluation and this is not scalable. Right? And at times the teacher perhaps also is not very uh, equipped or uh, capable of doing this assessment, right? So now we want to bring in AI there, where what we say is that there's a computer in front of you, it's showing you a sentence, you read it. The computer can listen to what is happening, underlying what is happening is speech recognition. It is recognizing what you're speaking as you go along, as you keep reading, and it's identifying all the mistakes, right? So that's the underlying uh, technology, which is recognition plus detection of errors, right? Now, what's great about this, what's challenging about it, so the challenging part is this, right? This is true for every technology, right? When a new technology emerges, it's always designed for a certain sector of people, right? A certain segment of people, right? And there are always marginalized sections which get left behind. And all this does not look good to say, but in this context, right? People in rural areas, especially children, uh, below the age of 18, right? Because most voice systems are built by collecting data from people above the age of 18 because then you don't need to get into any sort of legal problems, right? So then what happens is these systems, they don't really work well for children in that age group, right? So you have to now make it work for those age group. Of course, it will not happen. So one, one other question. Huh. So general, watch out here. Yeah. Yeah. There is a language recognition models. Huh. Can you talk about what's the difference between language recognition and language learning? Huh. What's the nuance there? Yeah, there's a good, there's a subtle point there, right? So now today, if, I'm, if I want to interact with the speech recognition system, I may speak fast, I may mispronounce, right? I might say, Pashat, and actually I wanted to say Pashtava or Pashatap or something <laughs> like that, right? And I was just speaking fast and I made a mistake. My expectation is that the model should recognize and correct and go ahead. Right? And do whatever I was supposed so to actually. So you should have said Prashant and moved on, yeah. because that's what you're expecting. Right. Right? But in this case, we don't want to do that. The kid has made an error. We don't want a model to go ahead and use its own knowledge. Hey, I don't think this has to be Prashant. It has to be Prashant. So I think he meant Prashant. Let me just identify Prashant and say, good, you did a good job. Right? That's not what is expected here. So there is a detection of error required here. Right? So speech recognition as it works when we interact with Siri or with our phones is not what is required. Right? Where we want the errors to be automatically corrected. Here we want the errors to be detected, right? So certain features need to be built into it so that it does not use its extra smartness and trying to correct what is happening there. Instead, identify those errors and identify those errors for a certain age group, right? So that's the nuance that is there. Precisely. So just to kind of build on that, so what you are doing is building a societal scale data collection model as compared to enterprise scale data collection models. If you see Microsoft or anybody else, they have been collecting data to train their models. Here is actually Tamil Nadu collecting data right. for the sake of building a Tamil open model for the sake of children learning, right? right? right. And with for Tamil and English, right? That's what you are actually enabling at right. a scale. Yeah. So this, right, people plus, yeah. right? Yeah. So we need to have people in the center. Right? So we, if you're building something for that age group, and not just age group, that's for that ecosystem. Right? Even the teachers are involved in that. It's in their interest to make sure that their kids are learning well. And they have to be a part of the data collection. You can't give a phone to a kid and say, hey, record data. Yeah. Right? The teacher has to enable this. Right? So the people or the ecosystem for which this application is being built has to participate, and has to participate to the right channels. Right? The government is involved, so there's no private data being collected and so on. All of those things need to be conveyed properly and designed properly, right? We need to make sure that we're just asking kids to read a simple story sentence and not asking them to say, hey, who are on your family? What does your dad do? And so on. Not all that is not required, right? So we make sure that the data is collected with the right principles through the right channels so that we are aware of all the privacy and other exploitation issues while building technology for that. So ecosystem. the larger story we'll open up for discussion now. Yeah. 
And Pratyush is back. Thank you, Pratyush. Come now. Right. <laughs> All right, cool. So the larger idea is, see, this is a learning infra foundation layer for children to learn language as a fluency story. But the same thing can actually work at a scale of a Diksha, for example, where national learning infrastructure that's AI powered. Could it be possible? I don't know the answer, frankly, right? I think it should be possible. We should be able to come together as a community and add the building blocks. And it's certainly the larger point Nandan was talking about and which I added on stage, that we are in a low resource environment and a low, um, low, um, low-tech environments, right? Because if you see some of the machines here, et cetera, are very low-tech. Frankly, we can't afford as a country to have high-end desktops in every lab and make it work. But I'm phenomenally impressed with whatever I saw in Tamil Nadu in every lab and the infrastructure they have built. So to that extent, I say it's possible to actually have these kind of infrastructures. And of course, 50% of them don't have mobile phone access. And that's a given. We've got to design for low-resource and low-tech. But bring the best of the cutting edge. That's the possibility that's being imagined. So I would think that in five years, India would have the best of the learning infra for every child there is, uh, for every learner there is, whether it comes to skills, whether it comes to education as a whole, but compounded by all other LLM uh, hmm. innovations that are happening in the country, right? Right, right, yeah. 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 So like, see, what we should be aiming for, right, and making this Tamil Nadu uh, example as a model example of that right? so what we are learning for what we are looking for is not for this to succeed in one state what we are looking for is to come up with a framework right? think of it as a box with that box i can then take off take it to uh, telangana i can take it to andhra pradesh i can take it to maharashtra and the same process can be repeated there right and this has several components right so one is on the pedagogy right so if i want to make sure that students are reading fluently what kind of design is required in showing them these sentences? There's no point in showing sentences yeah, like yeah. Mera Naam Raju Hai. And maybe he'll read it properly, right? But those hard words have to come, but you just cannot show all the hard words. You yeah. have to show them interspersed with easy words, right? So that the kid has a good time, right? Does not have like a very difficult time in reading that. So that pedagogy has to be figured out, right? Second is like, if it has to be enabled for that age group, that ecosystem, how to collect data, what are the principles to put in place, what is the policy to be designed, right? This has to be a part of that box, right? Then now for ensuring engagement, what kind of gamification is required, right? So we have done some gamification uh, here, and is that gamification kind of getting reinforced as people in Tamil Nadu use it, right? And the, then the uh, uh, last part around it is that the feedback mechanism, right? So once they have been using the app through the teacher or through on their own, through some dashboards, how are they continuously improving? Yeah. So once this entire pathway has been discovered, this road then, that's, then, then gets to be built in Maharashtra, in Karnataka, in Gujarat, and other places. So right. I'll, I'll end this with a comment. You saw the parameters on which, I mean, some of the comments that were, how are we doing this, right? We don't know how are we doing this. Because we don't know how to do this. So the first round of data collection concerns that have thrown up itself is throwing up so many challenges. So evolving the framework at a state level within the boundaries of our constitution and the rights of the individuals that we are dealing with. Plus, how do you package this? So one of the themes that I observed in the last one year in, in, in Indian context is, the number of countries that are looking up to India to, I don't want your software, I don't want your technology. Give us a template of how to go about this because we want to use it, right? Because the technologies may not be very similar. So in last week itself, we had exposed ourselves to at least half a dozen conversations with countries of, uh, in different countries, especially from African countries. Last uh, day before yesterday, there was Malawi in office trying to understand what we are doing. So the larger story that we are looking at is the language story that you saw in Tamil Nadu is packaged as assisted language learning package. First of all, open source it from the day one, evolve the package so that somebody can concurrently try and experiment. For example, a Pratham could take it in into, let's say, Uttar Pradesh and try it, or, or a Vadwani Foundation, again, uh, Ab Abhinit is here. They are actually working on fluency as a measure. And you saw there is a booth out there. How do I get or uh, oral reading fluency through AI? So that's another great initiative that's going on. So all the efforts here are to see how can I put AI at scale and make it work at an institutional level for private schools, public schools, and in general for the general public. So that's a larger idea, open for conversations. The Pratish is also back here. 
Yeah, one before opening up, opening it up. Uh, this is a very new initiative, right? And I think there is a lot more knowledge also in the room. So we should engage to for for you to refine what we are thinking. We are thinking collecting data. We are thinking going to the schools and so on. But what JB has managed to do is to get it happening at scale physically. So there are 10,000 schools with computers, with headphones now and so on. Uh, I think, but it'll be good to engage with this community to see how we can uh, refine it. Any quick comments? I'll just tell you what is next. Uh, we will next have a demo demo of uh, some of the language AI things which we have already built. What Mitesh talked about now is how do we collect data and build new models for children. But there are some things that we have already built over the last two years at AI for Bharat. We'll demonstrate that. But before that, just opening it up to questions. Can I first just give you a standing ovation? Uh. <laughs> all of us, yeah. To all of us, because you are not one, one person initiatives. Right? Yeah. Other comments, questions? Yeah. Can you speak up? So first of all, the way these are all built is giving power to the com See, the design is actually not create a package of solutions. It's actually giving capacity for the state to evolve the solution that works for them. So I was very surprised when Tamil Nadu sent 10 audios, approved audios for this conference to say this is the difference in the languages that we want to account for in this strategy. Right? It's a capacity for them to solve. So whether it's a methodology A versus B, it's a Tamil Nadu conversation. You see? And next time, Punjab wants to take it and Telangana wants to take it. It's a Telangana-Punjab conversation. But the, can Tamil Nadu teach Telangana? Yeah, sure. So that's the way this story is evolving, giving agency for people to solve it. There are enough English teachers. We are all good with English because great teachers have taught us how to do this, right? So that's the larger idea. Yeah. So one thing I'd like to uh, call out the first demo that we saw, right? This, in, in the demo that you did, uh, she said the area of a circle is 2 pi r. Did we have data on how many students thought that the area of a circle is 2 pi r? But with these kinds of tools, which are constantly figuring out what the, what the interaction looks like, we get much richer data. Right? Even here in this voice collection, depending on the data that is being collected at scale, you'll actually know which phonemes are being spoken wrongly or which English words are being spoken wrongly. And the second point is, if that data feedback is at sufficient scale and if there are no privacy concerns, we could use that to improve the models to find further errors. Right? That is always possible. That's what machine learning has shown. But it is, it is always very hard to get the data data funnel going, right? given how tricky it was. With these models, with these richer experiences, that seems to be possible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm coming uh, slightly from a teacher and a classroom and a student perspective, right? I think um, what I'm hearing is a lot of that student accessing information will become easier at, at one level, right? And somewhere, I think when we talk about chat GPT also, I think area of a square is probably a very wrong way to explain the potential of chat GPT, right? And then uh, something that you shared in terms of talk to Mahatma Gandhi, and it kind of opened up so many innovative ways that we can use it. The point that I'm making is, I think, um, unless we look also, how is this being used in a classroom? Or what is, is there a, is there a group of people who's thinking about what happens to a teacher when this is implemented, right? I mean, it's like basically tools are there, but if we don't work in terms of a teacher and a classroom experience, I think we'll go back to, to I mean, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the whiteboards of, of classroom, right? right? Every classroom had a technology of a screen, but uh, teachers didn't know how to use it. So I'm just thinking in terms of what's the capacity building required for a teacher? What's the... Uh, the 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 messaging to be given to school, right? It, I mean, we're not talking about replacing teachers. So, you know, I think we somewhere in this conversation today, we will also have to think about all of that. Yeah, good point. We should continue thinking about that. Yeah, there are two other questions. We we'll just take these two and then we'll move on. Uh, one question about the scalability of this solution, right? Uh, it was very heartening to note that it is an offline solution, by the way, right? And I actually read the press note on this yesterday, so like 23 crores for this 6,000 plus. So what's the kind of uh, cost reductions that people are looking like looking at for, of course, Tamil Nadu is a reasonably well-off state, right? So to deploy it in other states and all that, what is the kind of cost reductions people are looking at for physical infrastructure? Mm -hmm. You know, that's something that I would want some input on. Yeah. See, right now, uh, yeah, I'll just answer that while, yeah. So right now, we are not looking at that yet. Right? I think most governments across different states, right, 
they have several education programs, right? And what we are trying to do fits under those programs. There is budget for doing things like this, right? Improving reading literacy is like the top goal for multiple governments, right? And right now, we would just want to kind of go to states which are willing to take it. Just like Tamil Nadu, there are many other rich states. That would be the phase one, right? And from those learnings, we'll try to figure out how to optimize it and make it work in states where the resource crunch is a bit higher, right? Maybe they don't have computers in every school, or they don't have 10,000 schools where they have computers, right? So that is a phase two, right? In the phase one, we would just like to work and evolve this strategy about what is the minimum infrastructure with which we can do it, right? And that will go on in parallel, right? But where infrastructure is already available, let's roll it out there and have the other learnings going. Yeah, so uh, quite right about the speaker of a language and learner of a language and how the pronunciation and that data is different. But what uh, for a learner of a language, what is wrong uh, has its own definition. So as we sort of go about collecting the data and then getting to a phonetic model of some sort, the labeling that has to be done on what is wrong and what is not has to be thought through from the perspective of not just one variation, if you're saying there are like 10 variations of languages in Tamil, uh, in Tamil itself. So what is wrong and what is not has got its own definitions. Mm. And that uh, some of the people will reflect on it from the experience that was there in Uttar Pradesh of trying to use, I don't see Google here, but the read along app uh, as part of the Prerna Laksha app. Uh, and the challenges that came up there were primarily linked to what is wrong. Mm. So the labeling itself would have to be thought through uh, to make sure that it yeah. represents that. Yeah. So one one way of addressing this or like working around this is that uh, you have these annotations done by local people. Right. I'll answer this in a slightly different context. Right. So right now we are collecting data from Maharashtra. Right. And Maharashtra has very unique dialects across different parts, right? So you have the Vidarbha region, which has very different dialects. And we have tried this in the lab. We have two Marathi speakers, one from that region and one from Mumbai, and they cannot converse with each other. Right? The dialects are so different, right? So if you're collecting data from there, it has to be annotated by the local population there, right? They have to say that this is the right word. We use it every day, and this is how it has to be transcribed, right? So as long as the annotation is done locally with people who understand the same dialect, it cannot be centralized that all of Tamil Nadu data gets transcribed in Chennai, it will not work. Right? It will run into errors that you said, or issues that you said. Right? So that is one way that we are trying to address this problem. So the, there are several strategies. Right? One is that you could just pull in all the data and train one single model, which has seen all of it, and hence can work on all of it. The other is you build this base model, and then kind of fine tune with those individual segments of the data, and have specialized models for different areas. Uh, so coming to the conversation here, I mean, we are only talking of, again, a couple of months or a couple of years, I mean, one year, but uh, like, like it was mentioned in the previous conversation, Aadhaar became successful because the policy framework was first, and then the tech came, and then the solutions came. Now here we are, like, just to give you a very simple example, two years back, uh, WhatsApp-based learning was booming like anything. No? Every state had, at a given point, 18 state had approved budget and it was being used by, I think, some people who are there in this sector, they will know about it. Today, most of the statement are, uh, governments are refusing to do it because they say there's no validation, there's no proof and uh, whether it is right or wrong. Even if you can bring in evidence in terms of learning improvement, individual learning improvement, but the question is uh, behavioral thing. If a child is always on a phone, then that is detrimental to other things in the classroom learning. So from a perspective of sector, education sector, I mean, just to give you a step back a little, we have a quota uh, as a teaching model there. We have a lot of coaching classes. They are there for 50 years. They produce best of the engineers and um, MBAs and all, but no board has approved it, no, as of thing. So policy framework, are we thinking of policy framework? If you have to take it as a scale, if, you, if it has been approved by... Uh, Tamil Nadu government are the same case. If you go to Punjab government, they will have a different perspective. And we have seen happening here. Delhi has approved it. Odisha is saying, no, we don't believe in that. That's the right thing to do. So we have to address that part first, no? because tech will keep coming. I mean, we'll figure out a quick solution to it. But as a framework, we have to say, let's say Aadhaar framework is going to be this, and then bring in the technology. Yeah, makes sense. So I have a question for you, right? The question is, should we do some more discussion now? I think we are at uh, one ten or so. Uh, we have about 20 minutes or 15 minutes to go before lunch, right? Um, we can take some questions now. Or you can see some open source components being built uh, to support Indian language um, AI coming into these experiences, right? Uh, things like speech models and so on, which you can use. They're all open source. So what is what's the general 
Option one is to speak. Option two is see demos. Lots of victories. OK. Yeah, so we'll also have to figure out how to do discussion because it's a packed room, and some of you are sitting in the edges. We'll have to see how to do it. You would like one? Edge cases are too many. There are many edge cases, huh? I have one question. Like, uh, More than question, also, why, why I see a lot of questions, actually. Yeah. See, this is not a question answer session. This is a professor who does school. I'm changing it. I'm changing it. Three reflections. Yeah, reflections. Yeah. 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 Maybe you guys can come here and do it. The yeah, recap of the question is uh, WhatsApp doomed, right? Or uh, education on WhatsApp doomed. <laughs> and I would like to know why, actually. That's a curious question. But education on WhatsApp doomed. Uh, and uh, and you, you are wondering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it's okay, because you know there's a lot of collective time and investment of time that's gone into this room today, can we put up a whiteboard or something for just keeping a track of everything that can go wrong? Right. Because whenever, whenever change is happening, there's a million things that can go wrong. And so we can spend the rest of today, tomorrow, next month, next year, talking about what all can go wrong. My request is let's talk about what all we can think of, aspire of, and as an ideation session, and keep a list of all of the things we need to track. For example, on this point about are we, for lack of a word, you know, bastardizing the entire process of education, let me talk about a very real example. Rajasthan has launched um, a ton of English medium schools in its government system. Breaking news, there aren't enough English teachers. So you have schools which are claiming to teach English, but there aren't enough English teachers. And Ruchita had an aha moment right now to say, why do we even need English teachers? Or can we actually get a new generation to learn English, whereas the teachers don't know English? And that was a problem that was unsolvable till now. So should we start thinking out of the box? So we keep a lot of focus today on ideation and vision. No, fully agree. So what we could do, we could do a small little bit of demo, let you guys get energy after lunch, right? And then we will ideate on this board, right? People can come, write, right? And we, I think some structure is useful, but we'll, but we'll probably use the rest of the second half yeah. to do ideation and discussion, yeah. right? Is that okay? And we, we could do a few demos in between, but I think spend most time for ideation. Right? OK. Conversation starters. Conversation yeah. starters, right? No, no, so the other important point is we don't have to solve it today. It's not even solvable. <laughs> <laughs> Learning AI, no solution. No, no, but question paper, I'm not taking away. Question paper still with you. Yeah. Right? No, See, the larger learning AI, infra learning AI, for example, and the language AI are the two larger topics. We got to go with our thoughts. There is a scribe quietly writing down all of your questions. Okay, so there is an AI at work from IIT Madras, right? No, no, naturally. <laughs> <laughs> so it is going on. So we'll go back to, we we'll go with your suggestion of a lot of, I only saw twos. I never saw not even one, one, by the way. Is there anybody who said one, option one? All right, wow, that's cool. So we'll go with... Um, so now uh, Gokul and Ashwin will demo. You can, op you can open your laptops. Um, what they will show us are two things. Uh, one is all the models that you have available to you. If you want to deploy some of these cool AI technologies, one is you need this GPT-like models, but then you also need models that understand Indian languages, right? Uh, able to recognize Indian language speech, able to translate Indian language to English and vice versa, and also be able to do things like synthesize speech in Indian languages. So we have been working as part of this uh, Bhashini project to build these models, and also then use these models in tools. So first they will show a tool, which is for transcription, which which uh, is also open source, which you can use right away. So go ahead. Uh. Uh, so I think uh, we are uh, 10 minutes short for lunch. So we uh, actually wanted to uh, demo a lot of things. So we'll try to uh, keep, keep it as short as possible. And yeah, we'll demo what we have. So to start with, like Pratish mentioned, so this is a platform for uh, uh, transcribing uh, videos which are in any language. It could be English or Indian languages. And uh, be able to convert it to any language. It could be both in text as, as well as it could be in audio as well. So uh, this is a speech-to-speech -speech, uh, platform which I am uh, going to demo now. So the, uh, uh, the, name, of, uh, the name of the open source tool is Chitraleka. So uh, yeah, I'll maybe start uh, demoing this. So what I'm going to do now is, so I'm just opening some random uh, YouTube channel. And I'm um, uh, 
uh, so this is uh, since this is an education themed uh, uh, discussion so i'll just take some educational video uh, which is there on youtube to know that so uh, so uh, tic tac learn uh, uh, i mean tic tac learn uh, his is a channel for educational con content for children so what we'll do now is we'll demonstrate how we can actually translate this uh, content which is available in english to an indian language uh, so that uh, it, it it is localized and uh, spread out to the masses so what i'll do here is that so uh, the uh, the purpose of this demo is to show uh, how uh, easy and simple uh, uh, it can be to uh, achieve these things uh, using such tools that we uh, built which are a part so what i'll do, uh, do now is i'll just copy this uh, youtube uh, video link and i'll open this tool called chitralekha and i'm just importing it here i'm by pasting it so i hope uh, this is uh, zoomed enough <laughs> yes. Data, so. Yeah, it could be a bit slow. Yeah. So I'll just uh, quickly play a video to show you that we have loaded the uh, video from YouTube. I think there is some audio issue here. Uh, not sure. Okay. Yeah. So it, sorry, it was on mute. No, it's not transcribing. I'm sorry? Just play the original video first. It's not a translator. I'm going to show that yet. Yeah, this is the original video after importing immediately. Yeah. So uh, I'll not play this uh, full video since we are running out of time. So what I'll do now is, so uh, f f first of all, this is a video that does not have uh, subtitles, right? So what we'll first of all do is that uh, uh, using the open source uh, speech to text uh, models that we build, we'll uh, uh, transcribe, it, uh, transcribe it to English. So I'll uh, choose transcription, and I'll choose the model source as the A4 Bharat model that we built, and I'll choose the language as English, which is the default one, and I'll transcribe it. So as you can see, uh, this is a short video, which is of length uh, 1.4 second uh, minute uh, 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 for the purpose of demo. So the transcription has come as soon as possible. So what I'll do is that uh, I'll just uh, play from somewhere. Mom, I take the two-dimensional shapes called Gabby, look at this. It's a piece of paper. Its opposite lines are equal. And the top and bottom lines are of the same length. Right. So this is the transcription that we generated live for uh, uh, the English audio that you are hearing, especially if you can recognize. So this is Indian English, right? So most of the open source English models that are available, it's not uh, tuned enough for uh, uh, recognizing Indian accented English. But as you can see here, we are able to generate perfect transcripts for uh, Indian English as well. OK, so now, uh, so this is a platform where we can even edit, right? So as you know, so. Uh, hey, it's not 100% accurate. So we even have this ability to uh, edit the transcript uh, as you want. Like, say, for example, if there was a spelling mistake here or, or if there is a word missing, so I can just edit it and uh, yeah, I can do anything here as an example. OK, so now what I'll do is that, so I'll now translate it to some uh, Indian language. Uh, maybe I'll choose Hindi. So I'm you know, uh, going to translate the subtitles to Hindi. Like, Right. So now we have uh, uh, translated the uh, subtitles that we had to Hindi. As you can see, since this is a small video, again, the transcription was quite immediate. So again, uh, for the same uh, subtitles, I'll play the Hindi uh, translation. Now, what are the two dimensional shapes called? Gabby, look at this. It's a piece of paper. Its opposite lines are equal. And the top and bottom lines are of the same length. This paper is of a rectangular shape. Yeah. So as you can see here, although we have generated the subtitles in English, which could be enough, so we can even uh, uh, now go to the next step of trying to see if we can generate uh, uh, audio in Indian language, right? OK, before we even go there, so one more uh, th th 
thing that I missed is that. So uh, uh, similar to how we can edit the actual English transcript, we can also actually edit the Indian transcript. Uh, like say, for example, uh, if I want to uh, replace some word with uh, uh, something else, so I can do that. Uh, like say, for example, if I want to type Uber, so as you can see here, we, all, we have also uh, built something known as transliteration-based keyboard, which helps you uh, 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 actually translate whatever you type in English uh, to be rendered in uh, Indian language text, and you can uh, uh, use this as a typing tool when you are editing Indian language text. So yeah, this is just an example. OK. So now that we have the uh, uh, translation, uh, translated subtitles in Hindi, uh, now we have uh, we can see uh, if we can generate uh, uh, audio for this, uh, which is doable, right? So uh, I have already done this. So what I'll do is that I'll open, uh, I'll switch over to another role, uh, which is known as project manager, from where uh, uh, I already generated uh, uh, TTS voice for this uh, audio. Right. As you can see here, so uh, 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 this is one of the initial subtitles that we saw there. And this is the uh, uh, Hindi TTS that we generated for this. Right. So now what I'll do is that I'll just play for another one. That and maybe I'll play at another one. It's not showing properly. Okay, yeah. So uh, now that we have uh, converted the English uh, uh, subtitles to Engl uh, Hindi subtitles, and then now that we have uh, converted the Hindi subtitles to uh, uh, TTS audio, so what's the final thing to do? So it's uh, uh, taking all these TTS generated audios and trying to uh, stitch it back to the video and render it in the uh, same video, right? So uh, yeah, so. Uh, we support that as well. So we on the platform, we can uh, as on complete to imply that uh, our transcription job is complete, uh, which will automatically generate a uh, video translated uh, final uh, result. So what I'll do is, uh, once again, I already did this to save some time. Once again, hey, how do I open this? Downloads folder. Downloads folder. So we'll now show you uh, the generated final uh, audio clip. So as you can see here, we have the final uh, speech translated embedded in the video. Yeah, so uh, just to let you know, this tool is completely open source. All the models are open source. The tool is open source. It's already on GitHub. You can go download it and use it. And in all the steps of the process, whether it was the initial transcription, the translation, or the voiceover, you can come in as a human and do the correction. So this one sounded a bit mechanical, right, the audio. You can come in and record audio on that UI and synthesize this video such that the audio looks proper and so on, right? So this is, again, the whole idea is to make this open and let people work uh, on it. And we are learning and getting feedback from various people. One, pe one set of people we work with is NPTEL, which is the largest MOOC platform for higher education. So we are going to transcribe uh, 5,000 hours of their videos uh, with this tool. So we have this uh, government intent to make uh, higher education available in different Indian languages, right? So we are at 129. Again, thanks, uh, Gokul and Ashwin. They had more to show. But they will be in a demo booth outside. If you want to go talk to them, uh, they'll be available to show the Dhruva platform and other things, which, again, are open source things that you can leverage. Right? Uh, any closing remarks? We'll, otherwise, we'll go to lunch and come back and do the brainstorming. So first point, what are the key problems that you think we should be solving as a community? That Ruchita will start writing, 
as we speak. So that's one topic we'll do, get done in five minutes. By the time Pratyush and Mitesh walk into the room, we have a very exciting conversation queuing up for that. Before that, please. Any topic? Any, any topic? Learning AI, language AI, to start with. But in the learning space, in the education space, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, actually, like I want to speak on that personalization only, which I was uh, making a point earlier. Uh, so, see, like when I say personalization, personalization doesn't mean that because based on their demographics and all. It's, it's all about, you know, basically, uh, if you look into the uh, education system right now, you know, uh, everybody won't have the uh, same basics in place, right? In a sense, even oh, most of the times in a companies, we, you know, complain about. Uh, uh, saying that you know, the, it's very difficult to train the people. If you if you go and visit the small companies, that's a big problem in the sense they will have a lot of graduates, but they cannot even simply write a program for swapping two numbers, right? No, that's a reality. We all have to accept because the reason is reason is because the, it it all boils down to the basics, right? But most of the people won't have a proper basics in place. That's where you know that will be carried out because of uh, getting into the rat race. Because see, all of them are not we should because most of the companies. They will have a folks who are working or not from the premier institutes or something. They will be from the tier two, tier three, and this is a very quite a big problem, right? So that's where the personalization will come into the picture, because see, like when uh, when we train directly, if we you know put you know, put them onto the, some digital content and if we give them some content and ask them to go through that, and when we start you know uh, training them again, if we are training you know uh, 100 people, then probably like five to 10 people can pick up, but in a for industry for a small companies. Why it matters most is we don't want only five or ten out of the hundred people to be trained and effectively contribute. We want at least eighty to ninety people to be, you know, come up to the speed and they can start uh, transforming themselves into the work as soon as possible. Right? That's a motto. For that, how we have to do? We need to understand where that each and every person stands with respect to the, uh, you know, the understanding or the basics required to attain that knowledge. For example, I am representing a data analytics company. Okay, if anybody coming to uh, Tibil, for example, of the company which it represents, that I expect a, a guy to be a little bit aware of the statistics, a little to be aware of the mathematics. It's not only pure coding or something, right? But most of the times when we get a profile, they are a very, they claim themselves as a good programmers. They will have a great, good GitHub profiles. But when you start asking them a statistical questions, go on. And so, this is reality, right? That's where the personalization. When we teach them, and when we, you know, like if it is uh, like kind of like asking them, okay, if anybody is getting enrolled into the data analytics or something, can we, you know, like understand where they stand? First of all, <coughs> giving them information. This is all required from the basics point of view. Next one is where they stand with respect to that. And if we analyze that one accordingly, if we, you know, cater the content, if we, you know, like if we cascade that content or communicate that content to them, then that will be great. Then they will be. You know, able to understand, they will be able to connect, and uh, eventually, where it helps, it helps in you know, like having a lot of people getting converted into the yeah, workspace. Yeah, I, I just wanted to uh, maybe uh, related to personalization, perhaps, but in a slightly different way. That once we have such tools coming in, uh, we're going to collect a lot of data about what people have learned and how they have learned it. And, and you know you can start thinking of you know after all today learning is a lifelong thing right I think all our experience you don't stop learning in college and so on you learn your whole life which means if 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 there is all this data out there about what you have learned and how you have learned it you can have uh, uh, systems which tell you what you should learn not just learning you know uh, uh, learning a particular thing right like. Uh, photosynthesis, but a, a broader thing. I think so. There might be a need to also think, you know, what about a life coach or something almost, which helps you through your life and you collect your learning. Uh, you know, your, the record of your past learning can help drive your future learning. Uh, just like you know, we're having a medical history, maybe a learning history. Uh, just an idea. Because today it's not possible, right? Because we learn something in school. There are different teachers. You know, each stage, uh, like you go to college, they, they don't know what, how you did in school. But with tools like this, you could have your own personal history carried with you, and I think that can that can have other other uses. You know, maybe you can look at your past and say, perhaps you are suited for this type of a job. You know, counseling, right? Uh, and so on. So there are, I think, many. Uh, there's data coming out of this exercise which can have other usages. I think, you know, just a thought. Yeah, we may want to capture that uh, there are now rich data sensors, right? Uh, that can drive some of these decisions, right? So. Uh, 
two topics for conversation that come to mind. One is how would education be reimagined in this world, right, where intelligence is, is at fingertips. Uh, that's one. The second one is around, I mean, when we think about building all of these as tech stacks, how do we actually go to market with this, right? Uh, because go to market is equally important for being able to deliver impact at scale. And we saw Aadhaar and UPI take two very different directions to do that. So what would be the right go to market strategy for the education tech stack? Pardon? Uh, not yet. I mean, I would love to have a discussion around that. So I bring in a different perspective. I bring in a perspective of schools. Uh, as we grow on the AI uh, wave, so to say, we have had one wave earlier called the e-learning wave, right, which passed by very quickly. And what happened is a lot of mis-selling happened, right? So a lot of people here target schools or target individuals, and many times mis-selling happens. So now, is there kind of a policy that we can define where you know we can say, okay, we teach the teacher or we educate the educator with an AI 101 for, uh, for let's say, educators, saying these, these are the questions you should ask when somebody comes to sell you uh, some AI-based solution. Otherwise, you know, AI is going to be like, hey, this AI doesn't work. And they're going to be back to the you know, whiteboard or drawing board. You know, we don't want that to happen. So is there some, you know, is there a way that we can come up with a guideline for educators, you know, saying, no, these are the things which you should ask, because many times you can just con your way through. And uh, the second thing is, from a school's perspective, is all these tools, uh, there's a big restriction of time. Right? There's only so many hours that a child spends in school. Uh, if I have to use AI effectively, how am I going to use it effectively to teach a whole load of curriculum? Right, the curriculum at eight, nine, tenth level, many of here, you know, many of the people attending here know, is voluminous, is humongous. So it is impossible to dedicate specific half an hour or one hour a day to use some technology effectively or innovatively to bring in some innovation. So there has to be some rationalization on the curriculum side. So it has to be kind of policy driven or government driven to change the syllabus to make it so that you can bring in some innovation because there is just no time otherwise. So adding more entropy to the discussion, I feel like uh, curiosity and intrinsic motivation is so important to first enable uh, whatever we build for people to learn. So even with chat GPT, knowing what to learn by uh, I think similar lines on having a life coach, for instance, but enabling students or learners to reflect, to kind of know what to learn and motivating them uh, most of the education education system right now is kind of uh, fueled by the extrinsic motivation, like marks, everything. But how do we get that? Maybe there is a way to kind of build that. Now we have the tools to learn whatever we want. But how do we get that spark in learners? And maybe AI can be used to uh, trigger that. So that's my point. So, uh, so what, what I bring actually is uh, holds across uh, domains, not especially education and scaling, but actually I see the most problem thing it is for education skilling. Unless we, we envision where we want AI to be in this field, you know, apart from the whole society, what we are going to actually do in this problem, if you don't, if you go the wrong way, for example, WhatsApp teaching. Why it failed? Because we, we simply forgot that children getting mobiles on their, in their hand is a problem. We didn't realize that. Okay, so if you do mistakes here, we are not only doing mistakes in, in, in the domain of space, but we are actually we are trying to teach them. That means we are going to create citizens of the tomorrow. So it's extremely important that we have a structure and at a policy at whatever level it is, that what are the boundaries that we want to draw and where we want it to go. Unless we are clear, I think this, this is going to be a really dangerous situation. So uh, my view was just to expand on what he mentioned. You know, while we are doing a lot of teaching, teaching, I think the skills what they learn is equally important. So therefore, enabling trainers, faculty, etc., is definitely I feel we may want to consider as one of the area. Plus, um, the industry. I mean, I come from a vocational skilling background. So for me, bringing industry and institute closer is a big challenge at this point of time. So is there something that can be thought on those lines where I can prepare the uh, people for future of skills and that cannot happen without industry. So how do we bring them together is uh, one thought that uh, was a problem area that is there for me. Second problem, 
second piece that you know um, uh, we second piece that i also want to say is when we say skills one is your domain skills but there's also a softer element to that skill which is your um, maybe your 21st century skill or who i am as an individual um, which also plays a very critical role uh, can that be addressed can that be uh, can we support uh, the young in um, you know discovering that space through ai or 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 through some some system uh, which plays a very important part when it comes to skill building okay uh, just before presenting my point by a show of hands can i know how many of you think our education system in india right now is flawed okay so my thought i, I am naman and i am a class 12 student myself so my thought is instead of introducing uh, ai to our education i am thinking why can't we build our education system around ai because uh, because in today's industry as some of our teachers and fathers tell us that specialization is preferred over generalization so instead of you know learning the same curriculum you you can uh, any ai can customize a curriculum for you and you know with the direction that you want to proceed and it can help you Go, uh, go that way for example with myself when i wanted to learn java for example i had some skill of it but i did not you know know it properly so chat gpt helped me figure out what is my level and it helped me teach the language to a certain level so that cannot be you know done by when you are learning through youtube videos or you are joining a course or a separate course has to be created for you and so you know to fast track the process of learning and to be taught how to think properly and how to solve problems is more important than you know learning the skills skills we do have resources in this entire world that can help help us gen get skills but we really need to be taught how to solve problems or what is the right way to think great point uh, first acknowledging that and i think uh, because he is so close to it uh, going through it right now so the passion is there but uh, the point that i want to make <laughs> Uh, for uh, for the rest of us it's a secondary problem now but if the millennia millennia old problems are not put in the center or put in the focus then they won't be solved uh, the reason sort of uh, edusat one laptop per child and uh, everything else <laughs> whatsapp that was mentioned just now everything that we can look back at and uh, say that it did not work out and this point was raised here as well we have to really move beyond so uh, thinking of the knowledge based learning and if this if the technology that we are looking at is more about skills then let us actually focus on the skills uh, cuz until unless we do that it will again be trying to get the knowledge across why did now when you have to uh, why did you have to learn photosynthesis with the equation is a question that we should ask and until unless we ask that we will try to teach everyone that equation and the point of motivation will come in again that i don't want to learn that so till we address the millennia old problems and actually focus on them we will again try and solve what is near term what see what makes business sense for us what makes business sense is to get in get in a place where we can get a product out and then again we will be doing this repeating the same mistakes over again so if this group is about education then we should really uh come bare knuckles at it and say that let's try and tackle that problem think about the skills think about the skills that you want to build and focus the effort on how can we use this technology and other pieces that are coming out on that problem and focus more energy there because if we focus on the near term we'll again be repeating the mistakes we have made a number of times so i i think it is just continuation to what he was saying right i think what makes us humans unique is that we are creative okay we are creative okay and ai is not about automating what we have so education is not about automation it's about how do i actually put some guardrails such that you know i can still have creative thinkers when i actually use ai for educating i still should have our children to be creative to think new things and not just be asking what 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 it is also about what next right not about what in the past so how do i build those guardrails becomes quite important when it is education the so there is a beautiful analogy with chat gpt right in buddhism you have something called samskara and smriti so smriti is that memory and yeah. samskara is what you have experienced which is nothing but the data right and that is not just us it's also about our critical thinking which ai might not be there yet 
but it is about how do we actually use it so to help us. <laughs> so in this, I think education and skilling is already, I think we know a lot about it. Correct. Okay. <laughs> One like so AI is there. So my first priority, I think, from all this is that we need to have a framework for policy, and we are only specifically talking of AI. So we have spoken about a lot of education should be reimagined. I think we are not to that question. Is that how AI is going to change education particularly? For that, first thing we need is framework as a policy process, and the last is a technology which will come. And the second thing which you know there are there is something called education and the skilling. Education is driven by it's a supply problem. Right, school has to teach, and we have to reach. Skilling is driven by the industry. Industry demands, and then so these are very really two different things to address. So both have to work in a different way. And again, the question is, are we addressing for all, or are we looking at some section of society? So if my AI for education is for all the student, including including somebody in Jharkhand remote village, also to address it, then the solution has to work that way. If it is only for Bangalore people, then it's a very different way. So I think that is how we have to define the problem from a framework perspective. And rest all is. Uh, Finally, I have the mic. So. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so very interesting discussion. Uh, yeah. So I, we will be showcasing something called as P by C, that is programming by conversation. We also have a demo booth here, but I wanted to show it to this particular group and want to get your feedback. Okay. So this is a research prototype, and we at Microsoft Research, like me. Uh, Pratyush and to Vinod and Nishit sitting here. Yes, I know. <laughs> uh, we have developed this, and uh, so yeah. So, 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 just to give you a broad idea. So, we are because of all of this Chat GPT and LLM wave. It's very clear that the whole programming industry will get disrupted. Okay, but on the other hand, we also see that like many of the novice programmer or people like doctors, lawyers, or even like your maid or your cook who has never coded in their life, they might want to build some application. And they might be able to do that by just conversing to a chatbot. Okay, so we want to explore this paradigm, and for that we have built something which is PYC, programming by conversation, which uses a lot of like representation, transformation, or from natural language to something that a bot understands. Okay, and we have a bunch of LLM magic going on there, and so that anyone, anyone in this room, whether it's a teacher who has no programming experience or someone else, they can actually, or a policymaker, they can actually build a bot for certain use cases. Okay, so right now. One use case that we that we got uh, that we are working is with the Sankarai Hospital here in Bangalore. So they wanted all of their patients who are going through a particular kind of surgery to have a bot who can answer their questions. Okay, and now the doctor wants to build build this bot on the data that they have at the Sankara Hospital. They have the standard operating procedure SOP manual. They also have some FAQs, some post-operative, pre-operative questionnaire that they have answers to, and they want to put that in a in to build a bot. Okay, so let's see how they can do that using this P by C studio. Okay, so here he will just, uh, yeah, so Nishit is just running the demo. So you can see that uh, he has just taken a template of a simple chatbot and he's writing that as a cataract bot with a description that it is a simple health bot for uh, answering cataract questions. Okay, and then once he clicks OK to that, so this is the interface right now where the Right hand side is the developer interface. So there actually the, the, the doctor will say something like, today I want to build a, a, a bot for, for helping my patient with cataract surgeries. And, the, and here is like the sort of like the text that he gives that in to answer pre and post surgery concerns. And based on that, it automatically actually updates the rules that, that will go in the back end. Okay, so that the rules are and everything are getting populated in the center, which is the representation space. And that is something that can be hidden. But for this demo, we are showing it for more understanding. Okay. And similarly, he, the, the doctor can also say that like, because it is a patient bot, uh, it has to be more empathetic in nature. They can make their own. And similarly, I, like if you are, uh, I don't know, if you are, have an agricultural startup, then you can make your own bot with your agri experts. If you're a teacher, you want to make a bot for your student in a specific manner, so you can do the same. So it's a, it's a tool which allows or enables anyone to build a bot, okay? Yeah, by conversing to a bot. No, 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 so everything will be like the bot, like we'll just show you like how easy it is to make one, okay? Okay, perfect. So yeah, so actually he has added some more data that like, yeah, because uh, like, Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, so yeah. So Nishit has has added some more thing that like make sure that the bot is empathetic and answers from the provided document because it's a it's a doctor bot and they don't want the general uh, LLM knowledge to be part of the answer. Okay. And now now Nishit will just upload two documents from the uh, from his uh, uh, 
uh, he's browsing through it, the FAQ and the general information about the surgery. Okay, he'll just upload these two documents, and you can see that it will automatically update the representation here. So the private knowledge base will get updated based on that. And finally, once you have done all of that, the bot is sort of ready, and the right side is actually the the uh, where you can actually test the bot, what you have built so far. Okay, so that is like the developer mode, this is the test mode. And now he'll go here and uh, interestingly, when I was building this bot, the most common question which patient ask doctor is like, uh, can I eat biryani after surgery? Okay, so, so Nishit will ask that question. Uh, anytime in life, yeah, no restrictions for biryani, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. <clears throat> So it says that, unfortunately, no food res restrictions have been mentioned in the knowledge base. Therefore, it is not recommended to eat biryani after surgery. <laughs> okay. So, so it is, it is, huh? Very biased against biryanis, obviously. So, so, so this is a wrong answer. So basically, after the cataract surgery, you are not allowed to eat hard food. Uh, because of, and biryani apparently is hard food, so you shouldn't eat it for 10 days. So what the doctor can do here, the doctor instead of like going through the knowledge base and fixing it, the doctor can just, the doctor who is the developer here, he can just do a thumbs down here, saying that this is a wrong response, don't give it to my patient. And, once, and then they can go back to the developer mode and they can see here that this has come, that this wrong response has come here. They can reply to that response saying that like, oh, for 10 days after surgery, uh, yeah, you should not eat this kind of hard food. And now that will automatically update the knowledge base. And then they can come here and again test it out. And this time they can also test it out in any, any other language. So we'll try it in Hindi. Ki kya main biryani kha sakta after surgery. And see if that works. Okay. Sure, yeah, you can, we can try some other food as well. Yes, yes. So it says that ki surgery ke das dino baat tak biryani jase sak fojan na khaye. Which is basically what we have put. Okay, but as someone asked, we can ask some other food like uh, can I eat... Uh, yeah, you can you can type in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this is the last bit. Like, yeah, you can just uh, say like, can can I eat curd after surgery? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to type. I'm just taking the easy one now. So yes, you can eat curd after surgery. Okay. So yeah, so this is the whole idea and I think the important point is that like, like we will try to make this uh, open source maybe in the next month or so and, uh, and you guys should come up with like more use cases of where you can see uh, like so building such kind. It? it will be on GitHub like even the, all the source code will be open source and the tool we will like release it. But yeah. Yeah, exactly. Any questions, early reactions, what do you see and where do you see a uh, usefulness of such a tool? Yeah. That's why we want to make it like that, but like it, it is slightly more than that because once you have built it, you will actually test it out on hundreds of questions. And you will figure out like maybe for 20 of them it is not working, then you will fix for those 20, then you will again like test it out. But, but the beauty of it is that like you are, you are not touching the code at all. You are just using a place where you are just talking in natural language and getting a bot as output. That's it. Yeah. I think I might be the only doctor in the room, I'm not sure. But uh, uh, so actually, I was thinking of, oh, right, clinical doctor, sorry, uh, clinical doctor. Uh, so I was thinking about self-care for diabetes and hypertensive patients. This is a common problem that we're always facing with, right? Um, actually, uh, the other question that I wanted to ask was, how do uh, patients access this? Is this on, can they use it on WhatsApp or? Uh, OK. OK. WhatsApp? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And the other last possibility is for medical students. We give them textbooks <laughs> that we train them on and use this. Yeah. 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 For sure. For sure. So, I mean, um, the problem with such models, as far as I can think, is right. Say, for example, there is this answer that is given, right? It, it, will it also show the source of which document data was used to give this answer? Because why I'm asking that is testing this non-deterministic models is going to be very painful. For example, I upload one of the document. I don't know all the answers that it gave before it's going to continue to give the same answer, so it's going to get changed, right? So is there anything like that or...? Yeah, a little bit won't be there behind. Uh, shall we just identify? Because they'll not have so much time to present to Nandan, right? We want to help them. Maybe three? Is three a good number to look for? Three? So I think one broad uh, set of questions was around the uh, rail uh, the rail guards, 
when we build something like this, right? So what, how do you, what are the principles? I think also Niharika started off with that. What are the principles when we deploy this fairly complex technology for something uh, fairly important as education? Maybe it's worse in healthcare, but at least education is still very important, right? So uh, that is one. Is, is that is that an important thing, right? We agree. Okay. Uh, so please, please put please put down policy there also. I think he has been raising policy. I think you need to also involve the the government boards to put together, yeah, boards and so on. Uh, what would be a second? Education has been happening in a certain way, and if we are just sort of putting AI on top of that, then you're reinforcing the old ways of learning, but do we now, before jumping very deep into it, do we reimagine the end state and you know, I think some conversation around skill-based learning, et cetera, and then you know, sort of backtrack from there in terms of the use of AI? Uh, no, I agree. Just can we make that a bit sharper? So what you're saying is that also there was a co uh, comment earlier. Um, is, is there a need to reimagine, right? Uh, so I think we heard about parents could be supporting, teachers could be supporting, schools could be involved. Is there is it a large enough technolo a technology change that we may have to reimagine what roles different uh, stakeholders play in education? Right? Uh, we will help them answer it, but I can really solve those problems. It's not just simply because I have an AI, I cannot put the AI on it, right? So if we can make a statement which like, okay, these are my challenges, and this is where AI can really solve the problem compared to other things. Yeah, Very good. Sir, what is intersectional or interdisciplinary? Because now there's possibility to mix so it's many interdisciplinary. I think the larger story that you talked about, the mesh of the possibility yeah. and navigating around that, so it's interdisciplinary. Access to quality education. Access to quality education. Pace. Pace. You said pace as in? Yeah, yeah. Science pace. We seen the question. Were we excited like this five months back? Were we excited like this five months back? No. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. So or are we in the past? Yeah. 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 If we were just excited that ChatGPT was come, then only. So before ChatGPT, were you excited as much? Yeah. Okay, a couple of you were. Right. I was. So this whatever language learning thing was conceived one year back. On July 29th, the year of birth was uh, inaugurated. So that was conceived then. I think we are talking a lot about la large language models right now because that's the flavor right yeah. now. But yeah. even when image processing came out, the ability to look at children's creative arts yeah. and then analyze what they are doing or how they are expressing them themselves at scale was possible, which was not possible earlier. So that's a very different kind of technology. But again, if we just bucket it as AI, uh, what it does is gives us more agency, more abilities, or makes the potential much more for teachers, humans, and anyone and everyone else. LLMs are just the flavor right now, but more such things are possible with all the other AI technologies that are there. So my personal experience, I've worked in AI since 1992. I worked in autonomous car also in AIC, but there is a cycle. Suddenly you're so excited and the nice four years you're running, and if you catch that whole thing, that's good. Another okay, so here is a time for us to conclude. No, 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 no. Just one last question. Any uh, con? Challenge with this. Just want to end with that one. We can do that in lightning way. Because lightning challenge. What is bad about? Are we are we solving the biggest lightning problem? challenge? What's it? We are not solving the biggest problem here. The biggest problem is numeracy and foundational learning. Yeah. Okay. We should focus on numeracy, foundational learning. I mean, focus. I mean, right. Choice. That's the UN SDG, everything. So I don't think that is one side. Opinion is one side. The educator is talking, but. It's largely the technologist and then all of that, but the real teacher of the job still doesn't know. No, they're, no, they're okay. Teacher is missing. We don't have a teacher. Teacher is missing. In the whole narrative, teacher is missing. Except for all segments. Is it for all segments? And all segments. Inclusive. inclusive. Okay. Not inclusive is your point? Ah. I mean, chance of change. Con care. It may not be non inclusive. It may not be Misinformation or hallucination, all of that. No, 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 misselling, misselling and misinformation. Misselling, oh, misselling, yeah, what's happening? Yeah, right now. What's happening? Most of the good services are controlled by tech giant. Sorry, sir. Most of the services are controlled by tech giant. Yeah, the big tech. Big tech. Big tech. Is there a networking opportunity that we get in schools? One second, one second. I think I mean making people aware of the shortcomings of uh, AI as well because a lot of times yeah. people are thinking that people it, may not be aware of the shortcomings. Analyze everything <laughs> and give me the right answer every time. Okay. So, so individuals losing losing agency. Yeah. Uh, uh, individuals <coughs> losing agency back to the, the ability to think for ourselves. Yeah. 
We are using allowing someone else to assist, not allowing us to think critically. Three more, okay. Amplification of bias. Amplification of bias, that's a very good one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a good lightning answer also. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the scalability uh, leading uh, a teacher to a facilitator. So we are concentrating on improving efficiency by 10x, okay. but there is no inspiration like a real teacher will. Yeah. Uh, missing in, in, in inspiration. Uh, sorry, last one. Last one. Okay, you are saying something. Okay. Reducing employment. Okay, talk to Nandan about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, reduces networking capabilities of individuals that we get in school. Okay, so we'll stop. Artificial. Okay, first of all, we should conclude now because we're going back to the main room. So we have the first report out, folks. Uh, report out ready? Yeah, almost. Almost. Anyway, you have to go there. <laughs> so first of all, thank you very much. This is the starting of the conversation. All of you get on to the community. This is not going to happen because we spoke. It will happen because we did something together. So my request is all of you to get back onto the community. Let's figure out something to do. I don't know what will come out of it. I'm not assuring anything. I'll also be like you. Okay. So all right, thank you very much. Thank you.